Folks, the Dallas Stars have finally made a major move and they've gone out and stolen Chris Tanev from the Calgary Flames. And y'all, this is exactly what I wanted to see out of this Stars team and exactly the improvement they needed to make. We're going to be getting into every little detail of this Chris Tanev trade to see the winners and losers, all the trade pieces, and how Chris Tanev and Arm Grishnikov will fit with their respective teams. So make sure you watch till the end for all that and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey and trade deadline content as we lead up to the deadline in just a week. Now you guys know I'm already excited to talk about the trade details here, but first let's talk about today's sponsor in Sleeper Fantasy. Of course, if you guys don't already, we're doing the Chris Chelio signed jersey giveaway via Sleeper Fantasy and all you guys need to do to enter the giveaway is to deposit on Sleeper using promo code GRAV. The giveaway ends on March 8th, so you'll want to be quick as soon as possible. And of course, when you deposit on Sleeper, you'll be able to make daily NHL picks, picking more or less on any NHL player, including the Dallas Stars. And today we got a couple of sneaky picks. I'm first going to go Brandon Hagel higher than 0.5 points and Phil Deneau more than 1.5 shots. Hagel's had a point in all of his last five games. Deneau as well higher than 1.5 shots in all of his last five games. We're going to continue to ride it. We got 30 bugs from our last picks with the Wierenski and of course, of course, the Robert Thomas assist pick as well. So we're going to continue to ride high and get this one done. But make sure you guys go in the description, click on the link, and set up to Sleeper Fantasy using promo code GRAB, and you'll get an up to $500 match on your first deposit. Not something you'll want to miss out on. And thank you so much to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the Chris Tanev trade and just how wild it was from all perspectives. I mean, Chris Tanev was exactly the player I wanted the Dallas Stars to go after. If you guys saw my Dallas Stars trade deadline wish list on Twitter, the number one thing was a second pair D, and I listed of the guys I wanted in order Tanev, Nick Sealer, and Sean Walker. But really, Chris Tanev was the main one. He was the biggest one I wanted. I think Sealer and Walker could have been really solid, but Chris Tanev to me was the best fit out of anyone in the market. The Stars desperately needed a second pair D to play with a Lindell or a Suter or whatever they wanted to do. They needed somebody else on that defense to carry the weight on the defensive side, and now they have it. And that's really the greatest asset in Chris Tanev's game is the breath of fresh air defensively, the way he's able to move with the puck, still at his age, how good of a defender he is. I don't think we will realize just how elite he has been with Calgary defensively. He has been one of the best shutdown D consistently year in and year out, and that consistency is going to be so important for Dallas in the playoffs when they need a stop, when they need a shift that can just shut things down and keep things quiet. They're going to put Chris Tanev out there, and you're gonna get results and the leadership too. the amount of times he's made the playoffs in so many different leagues in so many different positions Chris Tanev is just bringing so much experience in all facets of the game and hopefully it'll be his best chance to win the Stanley Cup now going on to the deal itself Elliot Freeman says Calgary and Dallas are working on a Chris Tanev deal and it's developing I was on the treadmill when this was happening and I had to jump off immediately to make sense of whatever the heck was happening and it was interesting because earlier in the day Pierre Lebrun was talking about the stars and Tanev and, and front runners in the Tanev race and mentioning the stars as the number one team out there and ultimately they were able to get a deal done just a few hours later and ultimately it would end up being a three team trade in the end involving the stars the flames and the new jersey devils and it was all to retain massive salary on chris tanev's end and as you can see the stars would acquire chris tanev from the flames and cole brady from the new jersey devils in exchange the flames would get artem grushnikov drafted 48th overall by the stars in 2021 a second round pick at, in 2024 and a 2026 third round conditional pick as for the devils they would get a 2026 fourth rounder and 50 percent retain on tanev's deal now it was kind Kind of important for Calgary throughout this entire process to get a first round pick. That's what we were hearing was the Flames asking price was just a first round pick square straight up. And that's what we were kind of seeing how Calgary was not really budging on wanting a first round pick. And that's why we hadn't seen a Tanev deal happen yet. But it looks like the Stars made a competent offer enough to dissuade the Flames from that opinion. And we finally got the Tanev deal done just a week and a half before the deadline happened.
First impressions wise, I thought the Stars absolutely stole this deal from the Flames. The fact that they didn't give a first round pick, the fact that that third round pick has the conditions it has, which we'll get into in a second. And to me, especially with the retention on the deal, this is an easy deal to make for the Stars every day of the week. Now for the Stars, you obviously acquire Chris Tanev. You also get goaltender Cole Brady in this deal, who has kind of just been a backup for Arizona State and for UMass over these past few years. This year, really getting his job taken away by Michael Robel completely. And you can see a nine game is an 886 save percentage at 23 years old i'm not sure if you're really getting anything there probably was just a throw in a deal make the deal work honestly but then we go into what the calgary flames acquire and of course they get that second round pick this year which is nice to get they get that third round pick but the main prospect piece was arm grushnikov who of course was drafted 48th overall the pick right uh right uh, right uh after the logan stankoman pick in 2021 so the flames end up getting one of the guys they should have in the end but uh, definitely not Logan Stanko, and that's for sure. Still, though, I saw a lot of people saying who when Grushnikov was brought up, and I think that's kind of putting a little bit of a discredit to what Grushnikov can be. He is a pure defensive defenseman. Do not get me wrong. He is probably not going to be anything more than be a sixth or fifth defensive guy, but I don't think that's all too bad. His frame is solid, but the skating ability and the intensity he has defensively is going to be a great shutdown D on your bottom pair, and he's not going to put up points. He's never put up points throughout any really regular season ever for him but he is going to be a guy that does his job correctly and i think for the flames you could get a mini tanev in this deal almost and it kind of makes sense now granted i wasn't exactly distraught to see grushnikov traded to me that's exactly what the flames could be looking for in a tanev deal on top of picks as well as somebody the stars are willing to give up i mean to me he was absolutely a reach at the second round but also considering he could play nhl games still it's not the worst pick in the world and of course they end up trading him for Chris Tanev, so it worked out pretty well. Now, we also have the important conditions on that 2026 third round pick. And of course, Frank Severely breaks it down, saying the condition on that third rounder is only transferred if Dallas goes to the Stanley Cup final. So if the Stars end up losing in the second round or the Western Conference final this year, then it would just be a second rounder and Artem Grushnikov, which obviously would suck. I'd be fine giving up a third round pick if we go to the Cup final. I will be okay with that. Now, it's kind of funny because we got this trade circulating after the deal about the deal the Stars made at the 2021 NHL draft, where they acquired the 23rd overall pick, the 48th overall pick, and a 138th overall pick as well for the Red Wings to trade up to 15th. And as you could probably tell, they selected Wyatt Johnston. They selected Artem Grushnikov. So basically, for trading down maybe seven spots or so, they got Wyatt Johnston and a part of a Chris Tanev deal. That's not too bad there. Now, I want to get to a part of this trade that I don't really see many people talking about, many people mentioning, many people talking about that is a huge part of this deal that has pretty much gone unnoticed, and that is the salary retention on Chris Tanev's deal. He was making $4.5 million for the Calgary Flames and a pretty solid cap hit for what he was playing for. But here's the thing. I want you to look here at the actual salary retention on Chris Tanev, and of course, this is a big reason why we saw the three-team trade in the end. A lot of these times when we see a three-team trade, trade it's not for no reason the new jersey devils got a pick for a reason here and it's because there was salary retention twice by calgary and new jersey both teams of course putting 50 percent salary retention so now chris danev's deal is 75 percent retained and the reason that is so important is you look at the cap hit now of Tanev's deal, and he now makes $1.125 million on the cap for the Dallas Stars. And the reason that is so important is because of how important cap space is for the Stars at this deadline. Not only are they getting Tanev for such a great price with that cap hit, this now allows other options to open up for the Stars that could still be there. You look at the Stars and their deadline cap space, and Tanev's deal didn't really make too much of a dent. They still have $2 million dollars to work with at the deadline which could bring in any player of their choosing that is what makes this tanev deal so important because if it was just 50 percent retained and it was down to 2.25 they would have really limited their options they would have needed to bring somebody around a million dollars at the most and it would have created a lot more problems but at two million dollars it gives them a lot more flexibility and a lot more room to breathe to bring in somebody else now we don't know who that could end up being why that could end up being but here 
here's the thing the stars could have easily traded tanev had 50 percent retention on calgary's deal and had him at 2.25 but why did they give up a fourth round pick to get him salary retention twice i mean that's the big question here the stars wanted the flexibility here to work with and they wanted to be able to bring in tanev's deal and potentially another player too and then as Chris Howard points out, he says commentators on TSN in the Edmonton game just said Dallas looks like they're not done and that it looks like we're turning to Gudis or Sealer. And I think it was Pierre Lebrun that mentioned that the stars aren't done initially. And this was humongous, man. This is what makes this trade even more dynamic is that right after the fact, we already got confirmation that the stars aren't done looking. They aren't done searching for another D. And now all of this trade makes sense. Now, there makes so much more sense. There's a third team in this deal. So we put it down to 1.1 million to make it such a lucrative deal for the stars. The reason they gave up a pick to be able to make that happen is the fact they open up the chance to bring in a Gudis or a Sealer or whatever they want. This is what makes this trade so interesting for the stars because it not just brings in a Chris Tanev, it still opens the door for somebody else. And that's what gets me excited. If they add a Nick Sealer on top of Tanev, the defense becomes actually a strength, which is something that I didn't think I would be able to say. Now, looking at the Stars pick situation, obviously they don't have their second round picks in this year or next year, but again, considering the flexibility they have, as well as the prospect pool they have too, I don't think it's really going to be any issue if they want to go after a Nick Sealer or even a, another forward. I mean, I think I could see the Stars maybe going for another depth forward or something like that. There's a lot of options for the Stars team, but no matter what, they gave themselves flexibility to make another move and we could see them active again on deadline day. All in all, though, I think this is an absolute steal for the Dallas Stars, but not something that the Flames will be completely distraught over. I mean, Tanev wasn't going to stay long term with the Flames. He's obviously a UFA. And I think the fact you get a bottom pair D, a second rounder, a third round pick potentially, I think it's fine return for the Flames. I don't think it's anything to absolutely die over. But I think the Stars getting what they needed with the price that ended up happening. I think it is an amazing deal for them and one you make every single day of the week. But let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys think of this Tanev deal? Who do think comes out on top the stars the flames and how do you think the stars will do with tanev how far do you see them going let us know all your thoughts down below of course make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell if you guys enjoyed and share all the all the videos with all the hockey fans you guys know online and click on this card for all of my trade content right on playlist my name is nathan have a happy tanev day and i will see you next one goodbye